It's that time once again. Welcome to day 73. As you can see, I have finished the extension of my tunnel. It is currently nighttime. Um, it's working, or we're going to bed, I think, here shortly. But I wanted to start at night so I can get a little time to show you a few other things I've done since before. You can see here I've added some hatches just to uh, add an extra layer of protection just in case something on the off chances I just spawn up there and all that beautiful light. And uh, you know, to seal off my individual levels like that. Uh, these levels, of course, are not sealed because, well, it's kind of neat at night. Uh, because, you know, it's just, there's, it would interfere with the staircase since they're, it's not broken up into multiple levels. You can see I've cleared out down below here where it was all sand. I went out to the exterior walls that I had originally established and uh, fixed that up. Oop, oop, dang it. I suck at climbing ladders. Okay. And I went and readjusted my cauldron. So we'll go take a look real quick. I made it a little bigger. Um, added some better lighting. Uh, it's as big as it gets. Any larger, and it would eat into the uh, the main chamber <laughs> under in the in the basement. <laughs> so it can't get any bigger than that one. Uh, so it's as big as it gets. So we'll go ahead and uh, get started today. What I'm making here, and finally having a use for my iron, are ta-da rail tracks. Uh, I'm not going to bother making a minecart because. You can only travel on rail tracks, well, the way I'm laying them down anyways, with the use of a, um, a powered rail. You see I've cleaned up the inside here. Uh, the walls are all lined with sandstone. And uh, there's a too deep pit of water on either side of the pathway. So we're going to lay down some railing all the way out. Like I said, you need a, uh, a powered rail to actually move on a railway since uh, the the, uh, the glitchy booster elements have been disabled and no longer function. So the only way to move is with a powered rail and since I have yet to encounter redstone, I can't make that. So It's just a long walkway with, you know, railways on it right now. I'm sure I'll get around to the uh, the rest of it here. As soon as I find some redstone, I'll come out and throw some boosters on here. So that I can make an active path. Ugh, keep missing spots. <clears throat> Today's project will be, of course, now that I've finally reached out to my pillar, I'm going to begin building um, the area around what this tunnel is leading to. So, it will take uh, several episodes, probably. Um, when I initially recorded this video, I recorded 50 minutes of footage just to start, and that's with several cutaways that I'm going to have to ed I, uh, edit it out. So, it's going to be a while, and uh, I had to cut the video down to two episodes here, and that's just the base of the formation I'll be building. So, we'll go pop in, start some uh, daytime going, and then we'll get to building. You see I put a wall around each little pad, because normally I was able to, like, walk, oh, it scared the hell out of me, stupid cow. I was able to just, like, randomly pass by my doors and have them pop open, and, uh, so that was, like, the reason I originally started to clear out the area. I wanted to prevent myself from doing that, so I've added up the walls, and then things got congested, I'm like, oh, I'll just take out the dirt, so, and then I put in the windows, because, you know, glass is lovely, so, I'm gonna go ahead and get started, you can, uh, just follow along and watch, uh, ugh, my boat's way down there, I left it back there, and, um, I'm gonna, today, I've decided to, uh, go into a little more detail, like I mentioned it in the last video, my, uh, I call them my all-time must-play RPGs. It's a list of 10 RPGs, just to keep it simple and sweet. And uh, I thought I'd try to go over one. I went over Xenogears rather extensively last time. 
And, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's at the top of the list. It's number one. And I would say, after Xenogears, my number two would be Vagrant Story. Uh, it's another Squaresoft game. And I do mean Squaresoft, not Square Enix. We've been over that, too. Uh, Vagrant Story isn't an RPG in the traditional sense. It's a... It's a dungeon crawl game, really. I mean, it's more akin to Diablo than it is to Final Fantasy. But it's a dungeon crawl with a highly intriguing plot. And it's got very unique battle and gameplay mechanics that you don't normally see. Um, it was, as far as I know, one of the first games... Um, RPG-wise, to feature location-specific damages. Like, when you were fighting battle, you could choose to target the mob's head, their legs, their arms, and it would have a have a bearing on things. Like, um, you know, you damaged their legs enough and they weren't able to run away or ru chase after you, either. You know, and then, if, you know, damaging their arms would decrease their ability to swing at you, or Damaging their heads would, you know, cause, uh, like, I don't know, I think it was, like, accuracy issues or something of that nature. So, it's just, it had an effect in battle. Um, mind you, by the time you did enough damage to severely injure a limb, you're usually killing the person anyways at that point, because you'd already done sufficient amount of actual damage. But, it, in things like boss fights, it became very important to pick your targets appropriately, and you could move around the battlefield during battle, so it was, you know, it was handy to have the option to, you know, just, you know, like if you were fighting, say, a dragon, you could actually move around to where the dragon couldn't hit you with certain attacks, uh, well, not entirely, I mean, the mobs did spin rather quickly, but, uh, there were some occasions where that applied, they were just too large to, uh, move around, and you could uh, find more ideal locations for battle. But uh, the story was really what made the game. Um, before I go into it, though, there's one more element that I should cover as far as gameplay. Um, and another little antidote is uh, Vagrant Story takes place in Evilus, which is the same world that was used for Falsy Tactics, Falsy 12, Tactics Advanced, and, um, it was also in, uh, something else, I think, I don't remember. But it's in all the Tactics games, anyways, and it's the same universe Final Fantasy XII takes place in. Uh, they're just different time periods. Um, for all intents and purposes, uh, I don't know exactly, I've never looked into if anybody's calculated the dates, but Vagrant Story seems to take place, I would say, on a similar timeline to, um, the time period of Fossil Tactics, simply because it's got a very similar feel. If anything, I'd say it was before Tactics, simply because magic as a whole seems to be uncommon in this era's universe. So, that's, you know, that's something. Anyways, uh, gameplay. There was this one more element. Um, your main character's name uh, was Ashley Riot, and his job description was called Risk Breaker. And uh, it, it it was a little cliched labeling, but what it comes down to was, you know, reference to the gameplay element of um, a br of breaking combat, is what they called it, and, and you developed risk the more you broke combat. And what it was is it had a interactive um, combat schematic like when you would attack if you timed your hits properly you could connect one hit after another after another after another after another and you would chain together your 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 attacks and it made for some devastating uh, damage because while you're doing this you can't be interrupted so if you're skilled enough you can basically take out an enemy in one combat round if you had the speed and capabilities to 
maintain your your chain of attacks. Uh, but the side effect was that the more you did it, the higher your risk became, and it had a trade-off and making you, I think, more vulnerable towards future attacks and also while proper chaining would create like additional damage or status effects the damage from each additional hit started to drop too after after the hits accumulated to a certain point so it, I mean, you, you, it was about balancing out your skill with the gain ability of, of the attacks because you didn't want to put yourself at too much risk afterwards, because you like exhausted your character, I think, in the process. So it was it was interesting, but the story, though, the story in this game is like a classic medieval tale, but it's extremely. That's the word I would use. Like, I've never played a game that had a plot quite like it. Like, it, it dealt with a lot of personal conflict and illusion and disillusion into uh, what is and is not reality and how much control we each have our, over our own reality. And it just and all this is while there's, like, several other subplots processing in the same thing. And it's just it's very intense because it's... I want to think about it. It's very. Um, it's just it's it's so different. You don't really know what to think about it. Like it's like it was. I found it personally very moving just because it was so foreign. The 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 way the story was presented and the whole story is done with. Um, like chat bubbles, you know, like little pop-up conversation bubbles, and it's just, it's it's got a very rich character development for such a uh, for a dungeon crawler, and it's just one of the more bizarre things I think that I've ever encountered. So it's it, the story was was I don't know I don't even know how to begin to describe the complexities of it, but it was definitely. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. Apparently, I didn't think this through very well. Um, I was trying to go for a cascade effect, and now I just suddenly realized that uh, um, it's not going to work regardless, because I don't have a... What's the word? A... Um, So I'm trying to lay down a perimeter, and I was trying to do it without. I should have just done. I was thinking about being quick and neat about it by just like breaking one and then having them all fall. But it's because the base block is sitting on wood. That's not going to work. And I have to go around manually now and set up my perimeter. So let's just take out these torches and fix it. Because if I were to place the block right next to the wood, the dirt, it would have, like, made the uh, the water start, it would have eaten up that block of water, and I didn't want to have a downward force of the edge while I'm busy building around the perimeter at the moment. And I just thought it'd be cool if I could set up a cascade fall, which works normally if, if your base blocks are supported properly uh, to fall. But they're not. I, I, I messed it up. So, bad execution. And you're probably like, what the hell is he doing? That's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> It'll be fine in the end. But, uh, yeah. Game full of different plot twists. Um, I've played a lot of different games, but I've never really enjoyed Dungeon Core. Like, I've played du uh, Diablo and Diablo 2. And while they were interesting, they're not. I'm almost drowned. Uh, while they're interesting, they're not, you know, 
exceptional. They're not. That's the word I'm looking for here. They don't make you think, oh, wow, you know. I mean, like, how often do you play a dungeon crawler that has an epic storyline? I mean, it just doesn't happen. I mean, dungeon crawlers, by their very nature, are not epic. They're, I mean, they're epic fetch quests, but they're not <laughs> epic stories. Like, it's just, it's very cliche and bland and predictable. And this game, the Vagrant Story, was just nothing like that. I mean, it was totally unique. I had never experienced a dungeon crawl like that before. And... It was rewarding to play, like, and it it featured um, a rarely used nowadays uh, functionality called uh, the game plus mode. Like after you beat it, you could go back and play it again with your fully leveled, upgraded character. And there's just not enough games to do that anymore. And it was actually worth doing, like playing again. Just a really. Oops. I'm like. I know you can't see shit what I'm doing right now because it's all underwater. I'm extending out the uh, the tunnel to the other area so that I can set up a uh, an opening in the tunnel so I can go back and get resources while I'm it's dark out without having to swim all the way back or take the boat all the way back. Uh, I did get, I would say, a little better at um, digging out of the water. Uh, the more I, I, it took me several days. I said the last video was in the 60s, and this is, you know, 73. I think it's when I started. Uh, 74, something. Like that. And so it's. I spent a good deal of time learning the ins and outs of. Oops. Uh, how to dig in the water a little more efficiently. There we go. Um, it's important that I don't let water run over the railway tracks. Uh, water and rails have like this weird issue and they tend to like freak out when they run into each other. So that's why I left the open space between where the rails are and where the dirt or the sand is. So that if I get water flow, at least it'll stop and then just go straight down into the rest of the water. Because uh, the game tends to want to just like eat your rails if they get run over. Sometimes they'll just pop up and you can like collect them, but sometimes they just eat them and they're gone. And uh, considering they consume iron, I don't want to waste any. Uh, <laughs> Mind you, the uh, the equation a lot better. Like used to be, it takes. It takes six pieces of iron and one stick to make a railway, and it used to take significantly more because you get 16 of them now, but it used to be you got, like, I think four, and then they changed it. I don't remember when, but they've changed it, because I did, made them today, and I was, like, pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, well, that's not so bad, because I was expecting to consume quite a bit more iron. So... That's nice. Uh, what's that kind of idea? Uh, door. And... Lanterns. Lanterns. There we go. Lanterns. A, uh, a buddy of mine mentioned that you can place lanterns underwater. Lanterns in general, like a, a jack-o'-lantern, uh, that's what I should be saying instead of lantern. Uh, you take, you know, a pumpkin and you combine it with a torch in the, in the uh, crafting box and it becomes a jack-o'-lantern. It'll only place on top of things, like fence posts. You know, like you can only put a fence post on top of a block, you can't put it under a block. Or to the side of a block, only on top of a block. So, it's, uh... down, and if I can get it, there we go, let's see, there you go, and one more, 
You can see, see the, the door makes an air pocket. So I can use it as a rebreather tank. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and get started on the rest of the build here. Uh, Alright, so glass, glass, glass. And it's dark as... You can't see shit, can you? And I'm running out of air. Uh, huh. This is, uh, probably gonna take a little while. So, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna cut away and we'll come back to this when I've got it mostly finished. Because I'm clearly doing something wrong here. So, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will, uh, talk more about video games next time. So, uh, Goodbye, and uh, stay tuned.